can you record for us? So because we like to learn in Toastmasters and our recording will go up onto our social media page so you can all learn from this evening. So if you prefer not to be seen and become Instagram or Facebook or whatever famous, then please turn your camera off. And uh, just to remind everyone online to use your jazz hands for clapping when you are seeing something great. Hi, Libby. Well, hello, Libby. Hi, Libby. <laughs> And then us in the room, we will be clapping and going crazy for all our wonderful speakers. Then also, I can ask you to please use the chat box and send affirmations and compliments and everything to our wonderful speakers this evening because we've got some um, uh, icebreakers and then we've got some speeches later. So here is to a very informative informative meeting and exciting meeting and I now introduce our wonderful person Gabrielle. Thank you for our wonderful SAA standing in for Sophie who is our new SAA and this is our perfect VPE together with Janet so I just tell you a little bit as well about the roles we have now. Welcome to all of you. It's amazing to see such a full room and online as well. So um, yeah, a new year in America with Toastmasters starts in July. And um, we have Christmas in July in South Africa, but now as well Toastmasters. <laughs> Some guy with the name Peter Drucker said, follow effective action with quiet reflection. And from the quiet reflection will come even more action. Going through. Move, reflect, and grow our tonight's wonderful theme. Welcome guests and Toastmasters, guests over there. I have got exciting news for you. We will move because we reflected that we want to grow. So it all fits into each other. Who would have thought half a year ago that this theme fits exactly for this evening and we left one evening out. So we are exactly at the right time and the right place. We have a couple of new things invented because we want to move, but we will only implement them in due course. The first one, you got to feel already, you have to hear to be here by six o'clock. We will start in future at six o'clock because when we are in a hybrid meeting, it gives us time to socialize. And it would be such a pity if everybody would run away. The idea of Toastmasters is to connect. So, so who is the woman on? So counter. <laughs> um, president is not there. <laughs> Um, we are starting now at six o'clock. We have 20 minute break. We can socialize beautifully, catered for from everybody. And you at home, you just have to go in the kitchen and eat a hamburger. And then we meet again. But what it does as well, and we will implement that slowly, is that the evaluators will have a breakout room over there and they can sit together, write their own evaluation, and then three, four other or three other evaluators are together and they can pick on certain things they have heard. And it makes a very valuable uh, evaluation because we all want to grow and we would, uh, evaluations are so important. And that's why we introduce a new model and hopefully it works, we will see. But in future, it would be a breakout room either in person or online where we then construct a very valuable evaluation. We have something else and it starts from today. If you have questions, please put them in the chat box to our lovely VPE, Justine. She will note them and either tonight, and those here in the room, you know, we speak about questions, but um, either we are able to answer them on the same evening or we are going to collect them and then make a session where we come back to your questions. But there are pathway questions we know 
Welcome, everybody. And if we would like then to answer your questions either in a group or we will come when it when it seems to be necessary back to each of you personally. Another and another very important stage we want to implement are mentors. So level one, the first three speeches will be guided by a buddy whom you can phone, you can talk to. Um, the best would be you would give your first speeches as well to that person, either on Zoom or you meet or whatever. But it forges or it forges, it knits together a tighter connection in our club. And that is what we want. We want really the camaraderie and the possibility to fail, get up, fail again, and then be the star because we have the possibility here to fail without worrying and without feeling guilty. You just do it because it doesn't matter. We are here to enjoy ourselves. Said that. I think I said everything. No. <laughs> now I would like to welcome our guests. As we are in the room, I always like to introduce the people in person. We are very honored this evening to have Madeleine Engelbrecht, our area director, she will talk to you later as well, um, to be in person in the room. Can we point the camera? Is it possible? No. Okay, then Madeleine, please come here for a moment. Okay, this is Madeleine. Very welcome. <laughs> Um, last time already on, um, um, on Zoom, we had Jessica and Matt, please come so people see you again, because maybe we are so lucky to keep you forever. <laughs> <laughs> so here are our other two guests for this evening. So, oh, I mean, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. yeah. because we, nice. we are not otherwise online. Okay, very welcome. Hi, this is everyone. Yeah. Thank, Thank you so much. much. We are done. And Jamie online? Jamie online. Ah, yeah, sorry. Jamie online. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> well, as well. And Lizelle? Yes, this is Lizelle. Lizelle, Lizelle. I'm a little bit behind. Oh, no, uh, we have to. Okay. No, Julia, oh, no. Lizelle. Hi. But Lizelle, be very welcome. We um, speak a little bit later to keep in the time, and then later we come back to you and want to hear who you are and how you like the evening. As it is customary at um, Toastmasters, we drink a toast to South Africa and its speakers. I'm a little bit dry this evening, but uh, let's just think this would be mine. So please raise your glass. And, uh, okay. And we all, you can unmute yourself if you like, and otherwise, to South Africa and her speakers. To South Africa and her speakers. <laughs> and now I would like to hand over this wonderful gathering into the hands of our so capable and beautiful Shireen. Welcome, Shireen. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow toasties, I'm going to hand over back to our wonderful president to do the induction for our new members this evening, because this evening, in order to move forward, we need to be able to reflect on the past, increase our numbers for members, and this is exactly where we are this evening. Please, start mm -hmm. president. And now, <laughs> so this is, this is how um, experienced Toastmaster uh, uh, acts out of the, you say, of the, of the out of the cup, she just jumped very elegantly, lets me go, brings me in again because I should have done it earlier. So here you see how it goes. Um, for the membership induction, I would ask to please our new member, James, to come forward. 
and online we have Chantel. Um, yeah, Chantel, if she's there, she wanted to join us. Uh, is she there? Yes, I don't think she is there. Okay. Mm. Is she is there? there? Let me help you. I'm here. Oh, oh yeah, oh, yes. 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 Lovely. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Yeah. So may I introduce Chantel to you? She joined uh, Toastmasters International almost five years ago after realizing that she was the only person in the world who was, who was afraid of public speaking. The only person. <laughs> Toastmaster lovingly, lovingly take her, took her in her arms and helped her realize that this was just one of many misconceptions she had. And since joining, she has served as SAA, VPM, VPE, President, IPP, and most recently, Area Director, as well as being a charter member of the Southern Africa's first bilingual, bilingual Anglo-Francophone club. Go ahead, love in here, Toastmasters. So she is no longer afraid of public speaking, loves evaluation, and won the evaluation contest at Clubland in 2020, just before contests were disrupted by COVID. All this without completing her first of the two paths she is currently pursuing. This year, she intends to complete both paths and return to competition. We're looking forward to that. She has two amazing daughters, a fulfilling career as a coach, and is a former teacher and cyclist. New runner and recent resident of Cape Town, please welcome Chantel. And our second wonderful induction will be James Townsend. Woo. No pressure, James. Your icebreakers. We can do it again. At an early age, I realized that I had a passion for clothing and how clothes make us feel. Started my career in the clothing business, working with a local designer and closing clothing supplier to the same chain stores. Went on to work as a buyer and manager at one of the large retailers. After 10 years, in that role, I resigned to launch a company building software products that help clothing retailers manage their merchandise better. I'm married to Kerry. Are they there? Is Kerry there? No. <laughs> I'm married to after the boy. Okay, good. <laughs> good wife. I'm married to Kerry with two lovely boys, Tom and Oliver. I'm equally passionate about personal development and spend my free time learning about practicing yoga and the method. Yoga is a method for developing myself. You're on the right group. This drive to grow and learn is what has brought me to Toastmasters and Toastlet. Isn't that wonderful? Well, oh. Oh, wow. <laughs> now we have here our CVs, but I think, thank you, um, Dania, we can carry on. And you need to see. Yeah, you okay. see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is like a marriage, like a, like a marriage uh, um, <laughs> ceremony, you know. Wow. So what I um, will read to you, you only have to say the letter I will. I think it is like that. Yeah, let's see. So as a member of Toastmasters International and Toasted Toastmasters, I promise to attend club meetings regularly, to prepare for all my projects to the best of my ability, basing, basing them on the Toastmasters education program to prepare for and fulfill meeting assignments, to provide fellow members with helpful constructive evaluations, to help the club maintain the positive, friendly environment necessary for all members to learn and grow, to willingly serve my club as an officer, <laughs> when called upon to do so, to treat fellow, my fellow club members and our guests with respect and courtesy, to bring guests to club meetings, so they can see 
the benefits Toastmasters membership offers. To adhere to the guidelines and rules for all Toastmasters education and recognition programs and to act within the Toastmasters core values of integrity, respect, service and excellence during the conduct of all Toastmasters activities. Chantel, and please, um, Daniel, will you move with the next slide? You just have now, both of you, to say, we will. We will. Chantel. We will. Wonderful. We will. And I ask you, the members of Toasters Toastmaster, to pledge your support to our new members in their quest for self-development, to provide them with positive, helpful evaluations, to maintain a friendly, supportive atmosphere, to give them opportunities to help each other, and to make the Toastmasters membership a rewarding and fulfilling experience. So please unmute yourself and say, I, I, will. Will. I, I will. will. I will. I will. Hereby, please the next slide. <laughs> another one no good so hereby no. you're inducted to toss it welcome <laughs> well done. thank you very much and i would like to hand over now to our toastmaster Chevy. Thank you very much to our president and once again good evening and welcome to all of our fellow toasties our guests and our new members it is an absolute honor to be your toastmaster for this evening our theme for this evening is move reflect and grow so i hope you're ready for a little bit of movement because i've got an exercise up my sleeve for you so ladies and gentlemen that are on the screen online please can i ask you to stand up for me and everybody in the room, please stand up. In order to grow, we need to move. We need to move with our learning, with our knowledge, and we also need to move with our bellies and our butts. <laughs> so what we're going to do is I'd love for you to please put your right hand on your tummy, right hand on your tummy, and I would like to bless you I would like you to please accept Calvin um, onto the online meeting. Firstly, Calvin Cape Town SA has entered the waiting room. Secondly, I'd like you to listen to what I'm telling you. Hand on your belly, and I would like you to do and repeat after me. Ha 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 ha. 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 Ha ha <laughs> so now we're standing in the room and maybe you felt a bit of movement in your stomach. Maybe you've got some nerves going. Maybe you felt a bit of wobble, a bit of jello, whatever it is, but you felt something. Now I want you to follow up to me and think that somebody in this room is telling you the funniest joke ever. They are making you laugh like it's coming from the depths of your belly, inside your belly, and you cannot hold it in, that your belly is moving so much, and you are... from Robin Sharma's 5 a.m. club. We look at the 20-20-20 rule where you take 60 minutes and split it up into three different types of 60 minutes. This evening, I'm going to encourage you to use your mind and expand your thoughts in terms of what does movement mean for you? What does reflection mean for you? And what does it mean for you to be able to grow? So if you have a piece of paper with you, or perhaps you have your cell phone with you, or you are on your computer, or you have a really great brain that can memorize things. I want you to reflect for just a moment.
I would like for you to reflect on three things. Three things that you are grateful for today. You can write them down. You can just think about them. <laughs> you can pop them in the chat if you want to. Three things that you are grateful for today. Just reflect where you're at right now in this moment. It's in the crazy movement of every single day that sometimes we forgot, forget the smallest and simplest things that we have in our lives, the blessings, the people, the things that are there to be able to take us to the next level, to be able to help us to grow. Claire says, Toastmasters family, my family and my friends, just a few of the comments over there. In order to grow and in order to move on, we need to look at the things that we have around us. Are they positive? Do they influence us? Or do they keep us behind? How is it that we need to move on? How is it that we need to continue to move? It's in reflection. It's in looking at the past. It's in looking at the lessons that we've learned or the challenges that we have faced. At Toastmasters, our family has grown to many, many new members. And we are so grateful that we are able to grow together and grow incredible speakers. It is my honor to be your Toastmaster for this evening and to be leading you through these incredible speeches for this evening. Some who are sitting with movement of anxiousness, some who are sitting with movement of excitedness, and some who are sitting here reflecting on being unhappy, on being sad, but yet they made the move to show up and be here this evening. So without further ado, I would like to introduce you to some of our role players for this evening. And I have the pleasure this evening of introducing our um er counter. And I would like to hand over to Justine. Please come up. Round of applause. Thank you, Madam Postmasters. Good evening again, everybody. Tonight, my role is the um er counter. So I will be listening very carefully to, and that was my whole award, <laughs> is the listener. So listening very carefully to any filler words that anyone who speaks may use, such as um, so, like, you know, and any repeats. And at the end of the meeting, I will report back and I will just tell everyone that has spoken what their largest filler word is. Thank you. Madam. Next role player for this evening, I'm going to hand over to Louise Robinson. And I think this is the first time you're in this role. It is. Yes. yes. Round of applause. Hello, Toastmaster. Hello, Toastmasters. Guests. Lovely to be here. Um, I am the grammarian. It took me a while to get this right. <laughs> um, for the evening, and I am going to be watching what you say and quotes and clever things. And I have chosen a word that I think goes along with our theme um, resilience. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay, so we move, we reflect, we grow, and we've become very resilient definitely over the last two years of COVID. I'm going to sit here while I'm going to sit over there and I'm going to make notes of what you say. Any improper speech, no, no swearing, no swearing, please go. And um, I'll be back later, apparently. <laughs> Our next speaker for this evening is online and I would like to introduce you to Julia. She has a secret that she's holding or not holding, but. Um, Julia, it's up to you to go next. <laughs> Hello and welcome. I'm the timekeeper of the evening. And as time is precious, I'm in Gotland. And this is a place where you think time stands still, but not for you tonight. And I will welcome you, fellow Toastmasters and guests, as timer of the time, time topics, speakers, formal speeches, and evaluations. I will also alert each speaker of the time they have left using the green. <laughs> and the yellow card and the red card. 
Table topic speakers should limit their remarks to no more than two minutes. At one minute, I will raise the green card. At one minute and 30 seconds, I will raise the yellow card. At two minutes, I will raise the red card. Those giving speeches should limit their remarks to their specific speech times. Icebreaker speeches should be four to six minutes in length. At four minutes, I will raise the green card. At five minutes, I will raise the yellow card. At six minutes, I will raise the red card. Most other speeches should be five to seven minutes in length. At five minutes, I will raise the green card. At six minutes, I will raise the yellow card. At seven minutes, I will raise the red card. The individual evaluation should be between two and three minutes. At two minutes, I will raise the green card. At two minutes and 30 seconds, I will raise the yellow card. At three minutes, I will raise the red card. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. And I'm completely over time and I will definitely do better with you. <laughs> So it's not too late in order to grow for those that are doing their speeches or evaluations this evening as the role players have just described it. Let's reflect on, there's a timekeeper, there's an um er counter, and there is a grammarian. It gives me great pleasure to invite our first evaluator for this evening for our incredible speeches to Daniel, who is back abroad, and we are so happy to have you online. Over to you, Daniel. Hey, the Zoom master. He, he is also the Zoom master. So congratulations and well done to you. Thank you very much. Yes, um, if anyone has feedback, um, you're welcome to evaluate me as the Zoom master and send me messages so I'll be better in the future. It's your first role, Daniel. Well yeah. done. Thank you so much. So yes, it is my honor to be evaluating and introducing our first speaker, someone who is doing their icebreaker, Chantel Fiat. I have, I probably said your name poorly. Please correct me on that. But I will be evaluating your speech, making sure that you are growing as a speaker. Now this is your icebreaker. So the most important aspect of your icebreaker is standing up there and doing it. So just getting up in front of the room, I want you to know that you are absolutely already a success and an inspiration to everyone in the club because we've either all done icebreakers or we are waiting to do icebreakers. And so we understand the nerves and the confidence required to take that first step. So congratulations in advance. And I hope that I can give you a good evaluation. Welcome to the front. Thank you very much. Gee, let's go. Sorry. Thank you very much, Daniel, uh, fellow Toastmasters. Um, does your childhood affect your decisions? This is the point I ponder as I was thinking about preparing for the speech. But it's not a new thought. In fact, it's something I think about often. It's something I think about when I parent my children in a way that my mother parented me and I said, I would never. <laughs> it's something I think about as I watch people get totally triggered and no one around them understands why they're doing that. And it's also something I mostly think about when I have children in front of me in my role as a child therapist. So I do a lot of thinking, reflecting and growing. Let's start at the beginning. I'm an only child and I was born to a career mom and a jockey dad. Yes, life, a lot of life was spent horse riding through my formative years. And life was very up and down as well. I had a very rocky and dysfunctional childhood, which really helped me become a good therapist later on. Um, I had undiagnosed ADHD, which really complicated matters. So it was impossible for me to sit still and keep quiet. So most of my primary school was spent outside the classroom and often I was even forgotten. I remember one memorable incident where a teacher bought me a piece of cake and she had forgotten me outside so long. It almost made up for it. <laughs> Don't worry, the story does get better. At 22, I met my husband, my future husband, and within a year later we got married. Another very significant event in my life was when I became a Christian. This led me to quitting my very good job as a sales assistant. And I went to go volunteer at a street children's organization. And that led me to becoming a social worker. Those 
times with this. Uh, we traveled all around Africa to uh, different mission bases and we saw amazing things. A friend said to me, uh, with missions, the highs are higher and the lows are lower. And I really would agree with that. Highs would be kayaking across Lake Malawi while the sun was setting. An incredible low was when my husband got uh, malaria, cerebral malaria, and we really thought he was going to die. We're in this remote village. We had a two-way radio where you go over and out, over and out, that we could connect to Cape Town. There was no one to help us. And I thought his temperature was so high, it was bursting out his skin. And I thought, this is it. He's going to die. And some locals came and prayed for him. And three hours later, he was miraculously healed. So it was turned into a high, but it was a very stressful high. And then as with missions, the people are always what's amazing and really humbling. So another high is when I remember we had to leave the one mission base and family came to say thank you for all the work we done. And they gave us bananas this high. I don't know, are bananas this high in South Africa? Because they were this high in Zambia. It was a massive bunch of green bananas, which we caught around half of Southern Africa after that. But it was so humbling because we knew that they, were, they didn't know where they were going to get their next meal, but they, out of their little, blessed us with this massive bunch of bananas. So that was incredibly humbling. So back to South Africa, and we had three wonderful kids in short succession. And after that, we decided it would be a fantastic idea to go to a mission base in Zambia, even though it was a malaria infested area. And we had to cross crocodile infested rivers and flood plains to get there. Life in, is an adventure, we told ourselves. And I had to repeat that a lot just to remind myself I was, I was there quite often. Um, my children grew up playing in the dirt, stepping over snakes on their way to school and raising goats and rabbits. They also did just enough schoolwork to read and write by the time we came back. <laughs> While my husband started building an orphan village, I was farmed out of the various villages to see how I could help. One of my most notable experiences was I was being rowed across in a little dugout on a crocodile infested river with my two year old in my lap. And I thought, I'm not sure I'm actually going to make this. Life is an adventure, I said to myself. And I'm never going to do this again, I also said to myself. One of the formative things that happened while I was on this mission base was I was asked to counsel traumatized orphans. And that really led me to my future career and my real passion of helping orphans and their parents, because a lot of things, most things stem out of your childhood. A few years later, we returned to South Africa, which started another significant chapter in my life. The surfing is. We moved to a tiny seaside town called Malkostrand. I don't know if anyone knows it. It's on the west coast and it turned out to be incredibly significant for the strangest reason. We lived by the beach and my kids took to surfing and what followed after that was they went from surfing to surfing competitions to surfing holidays. So for the next eight years was chasing the perfect wave of going up and down each coast and it just really revolved around surfing. We even went as far as Bali to find that perfect <laughs> wave, still being elusive. These were happy years. My kids were sunburned, fulfilled, tired, and challenged. And that was part of my parenting strategy without the sunburn, of course. <laughs> During this time, most of my decisions worked around my family. Because my mom was a career woman, I really want to be home for my kids. I want to give my kids the things that I didn't have growing up. So it was an absolute dream when I could be home when they came home. I could go to all the sport matches that I wanted to do. And I could be involved in the school life and help them where they needed to and just really be there. And so that was really a dream of mine that was fulfilled. I also started my own private therapy practice because my absolute passion in life, other than my family, is to help children and parents thrive and do well. And especially parents to parent well, there's, there's so much information out there now, which the previous generations didn't have. So it's actually been an absolute privilege to just 
equip parents and with all the knowledge that definitely I say this with respect because I'm a parent myself. My parents didn't have that knowledge and they didn't have the skills. And so it's it's just it's been an amazing journey to do that. Therapy also started me on the lifelong journey of learning about human behavior and my current obsession, which is brain science. It showed me how much of our behavior is unconscious. Now the experts debate this, but you can say between 80 to 90% of our behavior is unconscious. And how much of this is hardwired by the time you're 35, which is they say 80%, depending on 80 to 90%, which I find startling facts. Many adults today parent out of their own childhood, either unconsciously or consciously, to either give their children what they had. But I find most of the time they're running a hundred miles in the other direction to do exactly what their parents didn't do and to give their kids what they didn't have, pretty much like my own story. This also leads me to why I'm doing Toastmasters, is that throughout the years I was asked to give two different speaking events. And I thought I did them quite well. No one was counting my ums and ahs, I'm grateful to say. <laughs> so I had no idea what it sounded like. I just thought I sounded big. I, I sounded fine. And then in my 30s, less and less, and in my 40s where I've been asked, um, I've noticed that I've gotten more and more nervous. So that's why I'm here today. Is I actually want to get back to being comfortable, back to my 20s where I thought it was absolutely fine to talk in front of people and to express my ideas and to express them well and to have a good time. So that's definitely one of my goals here. I want to have a good time while I'm out there. Actually, not having too bad a time. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad. You guys are amazing. I love the audience. It's not me. Okay. A key parenting principle I learned, am I in the red? Yeah. <laughs> I can finish. No, it's so interesting. Please carry on. You can, I've got a little thing, but I can finish. No, no, no. no, 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 no. You're so fast the rate now. It's too much. Keep going. I'm going to carry on. Okay, I'm going to give you my key parenting principle. I know. <laughs> is that kids don't do what you say, they do what you do. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. being taught this lesson really well when I was teaching my child and giving her such a good life lesson and she rolled her eyes and I'm like look, look what's that it was a lesson about the sweat as well so was, <laughs> and I was shocked and horrified and my husband said but that's what you do when you don't breathe <laughs> modeling is powerful does your childhood affect your decisions in my case absolutely <laughs> Oh. Yeah, yeah, I don't have to enter the key and stand up for icebreakers. Ah, yeah. Well, we had a standing ovation here for Chantal C. Well done. Um, and it just showed how resilient you've been throughout. Oh, so I I and resilient you've been in terms of conquering your speaking this evening. You were absolutely incredible. And in order to move on, we need to make the time to reflect. We've spoken about this before. You find some time to jump out of the trenches into the higher level thinking that you will move the needle. And we have to be able to do that in order to move to the next one and the next thing and move on. Without further ado, I would love to introduce you to our next evaluator for this evening. And that is John Lynch. He is online and he will be evaluating Birgit Andrach on her icebreaker. Please give him a round of applause. It's so it's fun. Fun. Oh no, what a pity. I was so looking forward to hearing from John and Birgit. Nonetheless, the lady who was feeling a bit nervous about her next speech, I would like to introduce you to our next evaluator for this evening is Nicholas Jackson, and he will be evaluating Michaela Goldenhoff, persuasive influence level two. Over to you, Nicholas. Good evening, Toasties. Good evening, guests. I am uh, the evaluator for Michaela's speech this evening. It's her pathway is persuasive influence. And what I'll be looking at for this meeting is her leadership style. So her theme is, do you know your dog? And I'd like to find out from her how she's going to communicate to us about her leadership style. 
everybody online we're just having some technical doubts giving Michaela time to just take a break <laughs> So, in dealing with situations like this, we have to dig deep in terms of how we've been resilient in the past in situations <laughs> where we've had some changes hit us and how we handle those changes. In give us a suggestion in terms of what they've done before and how they've been resilient in past experiences. Hmm. I'm happy to say. Yes, let me. <laughs> Please come up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and this is the first time we've got Debbie in person. Let me be here. I'm all the way from KZN. Wow. My family in, in Cape Town. I missed the last one, but yeah, I'm really too. glad to be here. So what I do, I practice meditation. And just a simple little technique that I teach my clients. And this is just deep breathing. Mm -hmm. So breathing in for four, mm -hmm. holding it for seven, and out for eight. Mm -hmm. So maybe you might go a little light just harder. <laughs> Let's all do this all together. Be comfortable closing your eyes. Mm -hmm. In for four, hold for the count of seven, and out for eight. With deep breath. Right down to your toes. And if you do that, whenever you need to practice resilience throughout the day and encourage your family, your clients, people around you, we underestimate the power of our breath. Mm -hmm. But when we are stressed, we go into amygdala hijack, fight, flight, freeze, mm -hmm. and we stop breathing. And many of our little people are sitting over their desks like this. Mm. Many of our big people are sitting, and then their lungs don't work. Okay. <laughs> Nick, could you test again, please? You are mute, Nick. <laughs> Can you hear us? Can anyone hear us? Um, if people could get a little bit closer to the microphone. Wonderful. And over to <laughs> Michaela. <laughs> oh, this is the first time I'm actually doing a, a live speech. Normally it's on Zoom, so it's a lot less scary. But here we go. So I have a big question for all of you. Who here owns a dog? Hmm. Who here has ever grown up with a dog? Okay, thank goodness. You're not going to be all bored in the speech. <laughs> Recently, I started studying animal behavior, complete 360 from film and media. Um, I am now focusing on canines specifically. My whole world is surrounded by dogs. Morning, canine to five. Uh -huh. <laughs> and <laughs> even my notes that are hard to read because they're muddy with dog prints. As I said, my life is now run by dogs. It only makes sense that I have to study animal behavior. See what makes them tick, just as you want to study with the children. But what are our dogs actually saying? Do we really know our dogs? Do they actually love us? <laughs> Is that chew toy really their favorite? There's a lot of ticks and emotions that come through a dog when all we think they're happy, sad, or angry. When in fact, there are nine, over 90 million dogs in the world today, only recorded, that's excluding strays. And only recently, about 20 decades ago, it was discovered that dogs' brains are actually different to mammals' brains, meaning that they're not like cows, they learn differently and they interact differently with humans, meaning that they always associate themselves with humans, hence domesticated. Notes are gone, so here, free for all. <laughs> <laughs> So that brings back to the question. Thank you. That's going to make me more nervous. Um, back to the question where dogs come from. So stemming back to Charles Darwin, he said it must be either 
artificial selection or natural selection. Simply because dogs were being bred during his time. So he's like, that's, that's always been like that. Nothing to write about there. And again, they still were associating dog brains with mammal brains. However, there's too many flaws in his fallacies, which I'll go through. But at the end of this, I'm sorry to say, we still don't know where dogs came from. No one knows, but let's go through the fallacies. So natural selection. Simply, this has started in Mesolonic years. Mes again, an animal behaviorist, not a linguist. So I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but anyway, moving on swiftly, back way back when we were self-sufficient farmers and all we had to do was survive, purely survive. The idea was that apparently now, tactics of survival, we would go into a very dangerous den full of wolves and steal their pups, because that's a great idea. So again, this is the fallacy starting where wolves come from dogs. Do they really? Especially because dogs are nothing like wolves and wolves are nothing like dogs. Also shocked me when I started studying it. Trust me, everything I know is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> from then, their idea was, all right, we steal these pups, but it's fine. We're going to train them to be tameable and vice versa. They didn't know what they were doing. They were still trying to learn what fire was. So the idea there starts and starts to fall apart because essentially, how are you meant to train an untamable dog, especially a wolf, especially if the older it gets, the more wild it becomes. Essentially, their idea was that we would keep these puppies and tame them and then have more puppies. But unfortunately, wolves and any other wild animals are not born tame. Only domestic dogs and domestic cats are the only animals in the world that are born tame. It's purely in their genetics. Again, where do dogs come from? So that's the idea number one. Then it moves to natural selection. When the idea stems further and dogs start, again, wolves. Dogs and wolves, we're gonna use them interchangeably. They come to dumps and they start to pick up on people's food. That's the likely cause. But it must take generations and generations for them to start changing. As like I said, wolves are nothing like dogs. Wolves have bigger brains, larger heads. Their teeth are a lot larger. They learn in different ways completely, eat in different ways. Dogs don't even work in packs, as we like to think. So anyone who's ever had a trainer that says your dog is trying to dominate you, it's a lie. Dogs have no concept of it. That brings me to village dogs. Village dogs are essentially where the cusp comes from, where our most understanding comes from. And what we like to call as mutts, pavement breeds, all of the sorts, when actually, be the purest bread. So basically it started in North Africa and then East Asia. And this is basically when they started to live more among humans. However, they weren't seen as pets at all. Instead, they were seen as owned as you would like own the tree in your garden. They were just around you. So essentially they became domesticated in the sense that they always associate, associated around humans. Meaning that everything that a dog developed in its whole evolution has something to do with us. So what does, where does that leave us? Are we breeding these dogs? Have we bred these dogs? Why do dogs have sm smaller snouts and longer than others? Why are run some better than running and some are not? Well, in fact, it just happens to be that we got really superficial and decided we want a dog with a short nose. We No, no, he keeps hitting my coffee table. It's better to breed a smaller one. So over time, we have kind of messed up the genetics, which is unfortunate. And that's why animal behaviors are playing such a huge role in our lives, because we can actually understand a dog. Because fun fact, not all dogs, well, dogs who bark, they don't all understand each other. Every breed has a different language because of their different voice, their tone, their ears are different shapes, their eyes, everything. Again, everything I thought I knew is a lie. 
So, I mean, I can only tell you as much as I learned in my textbook so far. So, for anyone, is anyone a cat owner? Yes. Mm. I'm oh. sorry, you're going to have to wait until my next Online. Online. Everybody good? Julia? Yes. Here you know. Well done. That was absolutely incredible. And um, did you know that dogs also can help us with our growth? One of our topics for this evening. They help us with responsibility. They help us by creating habits and they also help us with timekeeping. So thank yeah. you so much for that story. I would now like to introduce you to our next evaluator, which is Michelle Page, and she's going to be evaluating Claire Fonsell. Michelle. Toasted members and visitors, really lovely to be here. I'm also the mic holder. <laughs> so I have the wonderful privilege, Claire, where are you, of evaluating your speech. You are probably one of the most resilient individuals I've ever met. And I'm so grateful that we are experiencing your speech today. You are doing a podcast. It is level four of presentation mastery pathway. And the purpose of your podcast and your presentation today addresses the skills you need to develop a podcast, creating interesting content and organize a cohesive program. You will learn how to record and upload it to the internet. The purpose of this project is to introduce you to the skills needed to organize and present a podcast. Claire Fancel, I hand over to you. Good luck. Woo so speeches by candlelight effectively because i was looking at the wrong time zone at load shedding schedule so this project when i saw this i was like Ooh! and then i thought how exciting because we're better to do this kind of thing in a toastmasters club so this first presentation or this first session that i'm having with you is actually to get some feedback to, I want to be able to share some general information about my idea to create a podcast series and why I believe that I have the required life experience, knowledge, tools, and practical experience to help people, because I've been doing that for a number of people around the world now, to help them to transform their limiting beliefs and subconscious programs in order to create what they actually do want in their life. And I'd love to receive some feedback from everybody that's attending, guests and members and visitors. If you look in the chat, there's a lovely questionnaire that Jenneth helped me create. So if you can give me your feedback, that would be wonderful. So what is this all about? The aim of the podcast is to talk about the different ways that our subconscious programming and limiting beliefs impact on our lives and to help as many people discover that we really are the creators of our lives. Now, when I heard this, I was like, yeah, I don't believe you. Because why? Why would I invite all this nonsense into my life? Why would I create it? Are you mad? Well, I now fully understand. And I can see exactly how I created everything in my life. And I mean everything because some of that stuff was in my subconscious. So from the good, the bad, bad to the downright ugly. Yes, I appreciate the value of all those experiences because they've now helped me to see from a new perspective, to give me insights. And in some cases, some amazing blessings. I didn't feel that way when they were happening. So in the series, uh, these are some of the areas that I'd like to cover. So the difference between living your life coming from love or from fear, because ultimately those are the only two choices we have. Everything, when you boil it down to the basics, we're coming from love, we're coming from fear. And to focus on what we actually want as opposed to what we don't want. Another area is around love, trust, compassion for ourselves and for others, confidence, self-esteem, money, relationships, health, and then stress and trauma. 
because trauma people think is you know blood and gore and horrific crashes but actually some of the people i've worked with trauma is daddy didn't put the barbie doll's head on straight and 35 years later i'm still having issues with that so it doesn't have to be the horrific stuff to create stress and trauma for us so my experience so my value is lifelong learning and for the last 29 years those are the things that i've been learning about reading books listening to and studying information presented either in writing on an audio or a visual video a podcast you name it you know i'm looking at it attending workshops and courses online and in person and the subject all relates to basically why we do say and act the way we do and how we can learn and grow in order to face and overcome the challenges that some of our journeys uh, put us through and actually to enjoy that that uh, those experiences even if it's in hindsight so we get back to my story for the first 46 years of my life i thought there's something very wrong here i've read all these books i've tried to apply what they've said but i just get more of what i don't want so i unfortunately and unintentionally actually created more of what I didn't want, even though I believed that I was very clear that I didn't want those experiences again. And so some of those were myself and my husband becoming retrenched yet again. I was struggling to make ends meet financially, but despite me working four jobs across a day, 17 hours, having very little money for food and being the sole financial provider, and I present sort of perspectives on money being the polar opposite. Save it for me. And he was, spend it, don't worry about tomorrow. I was stuck in the why of everything. So what I'd like to do with the podcast is to look at situations like I've faced, like many other people are facing, and help them see how we can change those things, how we can change our perspectives of those things that caused us stress. So the goal of the podcast is to share the information about transforming our lives, share the stories of the people that I've worked with who have benefited from the process I use and from other processes, and then to share practical tools and tips and steps to actually become the best and happiest version of ourselves, and ultimately to have a positive influence on the people in our lives. Because the happier we are, it doesn't matter if we're encountering the cashier at the checkout at the supermarket or the people who collect the refuse. Those are all going to be positive impact, uh, positive inter interactions. So with the Toastmasters project, I have to create at least 60 minutes worth of content. I'd really love your feedback. Please go onto the Google document and give me all the feedback you can. Do you like this idea? Do you think there'd be some value in this? And let me know, Madam Toastmaster. Ladies and gentlemen, our resilient Claire Fonseil. Podcast writer, presenter, we wish you all the best for that. Without further ado, I would like to hand over to Gabrielle, our president, to introduce our guest speaker for this evening. Please put your hands together for Gabrielle. Yeah, we are very honored to have Madeline Engelbrecht with us. She is the new area director. I have nothing to say more than we are so honored to have her with us. She has a career, high career already behind her as a Toastmaster to be voted the area director. Maybe she can tell us now what her outlook on, the, uh, on her uh, new um, position is and how we can help her, we can support her, and she would speak for herself. Welcome, Madeline. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And thanks, Gabrielle, for the really warm welcome. I'll be honest with you, this is the first time since the beginning of 2020 that I'm standing in front of a real audience. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
we've been having online meetings for nearly two years now, hasn't it been? So thank you. This is the first club that I'm visiting as an area director. And Gabrielle just made me immediately feel incredibly welcome. And do you want me to hold that? I can hold it. Oh, it's fine. I'm I'm, that's okay. okay. I, I can do it. So Gabrielle has made me feel incredibly warm, warmly welcome straight away when we when we made contact. So thanks for that. And so has your two VPEs been. <laughs> I've already had support from them. So a little bit about myself. My name is Madeleine Engelbrecht, and I've been a personal since 2014. So I say to what you were saying, I was getting the, the older I got, the worse I got when I had to stand in front of people. I would just, at some point, it got to that where my legs were shaking, my eyes were, you know, that glare when you bunny in the headlights type of glare? I had that. And my throat would just close up. I stopped breathing, I think, <laughs> a little bit. And I literally, the words that came out of my mouth were completely uncontrollable. I don't know what I said. Nobody understood. I don't think I understood it. Nobody else understood it. And I would say the same things over and over. It was just, it was unbelievable. And it just got worse and worse. So I had to join Toastmasters. And I inquired about Toastmasters. And 12 months later, I had the guts to walk into my first Toastmasters meeting. It literally took this club 12 months to convince me to come and even attend a meeting. But here I am years later. Um, from there, my CV reads not quite as great as is it Chantel, the new the new Chantel, maybe, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've been a VPM and a VP some E's and a VP. I've yeah, I've I've passed IPP now. I've been in a variety of of, of uh, leadership roles within clubs. And three just before COVID, I moved from Johannesburg to Cape Town. That's well, that's what I'm saying. It sounds a little bit like Chantal's CV. And joined the Breakfast Club, where I've been a member ever since. And I met your son, <laughs> who thought he's, he's very good. He was such a great member, but they decided he's going to leave. So that's a little bit about me. And I really feel it's, it's a massive privilege for me to stand here in front of this club. And I, uh, and <laughs> so I, yeah, I feel really honored to be here. It's, it's, it's really great. And I believe you are, you are still, are you still the home club of Verity Cross, the world time? Yes, 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 yeah, well, yeah. well, I'm sure that puts a little bit of pressure on yourselves to be, to be also produce the next. Uh, coming. No, we just want the opportunity. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it's very it's very topical because Verity put herself out there. You know, she took a she had a really daring goal and thought she could be the district seventy four champion of public speaking. And then when she's done up until that point with the video, she thought, well, she could become the world champion in public speaking. And she set herself these daring goals, and she completely prepared for them. So that brings me to what we have set ourselves as a division. We want to be daring division B. So all the divisions, and for those who don't know, don't maybe know the sort of echelons of Toastmasters, you have clubs like this one. Then five clubs are part of, the, of an area. And at this point, we've got four areas that, that form part of division B. And that then rolls up into District 74, which is Southern Africa, all the various countries in Southern Africa that are part of Toastmasters. So that's where we fit in. I've almost lost it. Yeah, so lost the thread there. But basically, daring division B is what we want to be. And with that, we want all our members of all our clubs in our division to set themselves daring goals, mm -hmm. very much fitting with the nice theme. Mm -hmm. Flex it a little bit, but really set ourselves daring goals, whatever that might mean for each one of us. And it links really with, with, as I said, with Verity having set those sort of goals. So my my own goal for this year, as 12 months as being the area director, is firstly my own home club, breakfast club. I want to be trusted and distinguished. And that means you've literally reached the base for the highest accolade within Toastmasters for a club. I want all the clubs in mm -hmm. our area to be trusted and distinguished. I want some of those that have maybe lost the way a little bit, have lost the buzz to feel it again. You know, your club is phenomenally vibrant, but I'm sure not all clubs are like that. So we want all our clubs in our area to be vibrant, to really have that buzz again, to 
to just feel what success is. And when we look back in 12 months at all reached, precedent, distinguished. And then something else with, that I, that we have set ourselves is succession, really bringing succession. Would you believe there's supposedly a drought? I think I put it down. <laughs> there's supposedly a drought in leadership in the in the Western Cape in Toastmasters, and there's been sometimes been a struggle for clubs to find exco members or club officers. We, you've been very lucky; you have more than one BTE, and we more than one BTM. So give yourselves a round of applause for that. <laughs> and I think that's where you can possibly help other clubs that's been struggling to get leadership in place to create that that sort of you know. The daringness to want to be leaders because leadership is not for the faint hearted. You need to be resilient. To be and you need to you need to put yourself out there. But when we've created this sense of leadership, clubs have created succession. I think we can have this real ripple effect within the Western Cape within our area and division of people standing up, raising their hands for leadership goals, so that we can. Be competing with Harteng because there's a lot less, you know, there's competition, a lot more competition for roles. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so that's something that we want. Then something that I personally want is that we as, as clubs in our area, at some point, at least this once in the 12 months, get together in person and we have an event that is fun, but it's also learning that will stand out in our Toastmasters career as something, this is really amazing. This is really something else and we love doing it. And I will do that by one of the things that we do is to create an area council, which will consist of myself and our four, five clubs presidents and BTM BTEs. In this area council, we'll share ideas, we'll see how we can support each other and how we can motivate each other to to reach success in this area council and that and that's the way that we're going to be the link between district and the members it's through this area council through this uh, us group uh, uh, under the what we call e2 area so in there once we get together i'll start raising the question about people who may have a project to take on and they speech towards um, those master distinguished or distinguished those masters to take on a project and join up in a project that we can really do something really fun and get, get together and do something really, really interesting. Got some ideas, but we'll see when we get together to talk about that. So that for me, when I look back, when all clubs are present and distinguished, and when we've had this fantastic event that we can look back, that will be my feeling of success that I've actually achieved something as an area director in the 12 months that's ahead. And this is really almost the first week. So with that, I want to just ask all of you to just stop for a moment and just write down maybe a couple of goals, a couple of daring goals. You've written already about, you know, you were going to do that too, were you? <laughs> okay, you've written something down that, you, that you're grateful for, those online, as well as everybody in the room. Maybe just a couple of goals that you want to achieve in the next 12 months. And if you can write it on a piece of paper that you can maybe take with you later, that would be even better. But I don't want to use time for this. Uh, with that, I just want to wish you and the clubs a lot of success. And I can see you just on an app and you can or you take me this trip already. And I'm looking so much forward to working with all of you. And Drew Gabriel, thank you for the warm welcome. Thank you. Thank you. The time. Oh, yeah. Is there any I have, would there be any questions? I'm sure we have another two minutes for that. Okay, we we'll answer. Nobody online, hands up. No, perfect. So, no questions. That's excellent. Well, I'm available through Gabrielle or directly if you find me somehow. You're welcome. I'm um, here to help and support. Thank you, much. <laughs> Thank you so much, and it's been an absolute pleasure hosting you this evening. I would like to hand over to Julia for our timekeeper's report. Drum roll, please. So, as we just had midsummer and the time never sets in this country, I definitely saw the sun rising today beautifully with Chantal having her icebreaker speech. And I must say, it's beautiful to see and to count the minutes that everyone was beautifully in time. 
Gabriel, there is no second talk too much from your side. You keep everything together. Thank you so much. And I give you the 30 seconds. You had more than everything with Chantal, the nine minutes 45. Did I really say it? Doesn't matter. Welcome to the club. <laughs> Getting better. <laughs> Michelle, I'm absolutely impressed. You did it on the dot for seven minutes beautifully. Just the end was just beautiful. Okay. And Claire, with six minutes 33, I watched you before. You always see the watch and you always watch the colors. And that is what you're very good in. So I don't think you have any issues with the time. Last but not least, Madeleine, thank you so much for sharing your experience and the moment with you. With nine minutes, you had 15 minutes. I would beautifully have given it to you. I'm sure you have six more minutes more to talk. But now I'm in Sweden. I will take some knäcke bread. And you know, they eat caviar in a tube. Can you imagine? <laughs> oh, guys, please, I give back to Shireen. She will give it, she will give it to the vote and I'm looking forward to the break and I see you afterwards. Shireen, thank you so much for giving us the time for our break. See you in the room. We are going to pass a piece of paper around for you to please vote for the best speaker. And for those of you online, please do fill in the poll. And I'm going to hand over to our sergeant at arms. We're going on a break now for how many minutes, please, ma'am? Okay, just write best speaker in the name. Yeah, yeah. We, let's let's go back to let's do go back, uh, let's start as if on program 1930. Okay, we're going on a break now. We'll be back at 730 or 1900 hours and 30 minutes. See you soon. We are refreshed and we hope that yes, we are being recorded. Wonderful. In true spirits with regards to the theme for this evening in order to grow evaluations are very very important the feedback that we get from every single member is important and i would like to invite you daniel our zoom master and also our first evaluator to please give your evaluation this evening um, for our first speaker icebreaker first time chantal over to you daniel <laughs> hello wow so I am very, sorry, I got a light flash. I am very excited. Now, I think there was a little mistake because I was told that I was evaluating an icebreaker speech. And I think we can <laughs> all see that that did not seem like an icebreaker speech. Um, I, I honestly loved your speech, Chantel. It was, it was amazing. The, the story was captivating. I really, really enjoyed just hearing about you, learning about you. And, you know, honestly, and this is a true invitation, I would love to take a few minutes sometime and chat with you because you seem like an incredibly interesting person. And I don't know if it applies to everyone, but your life is certainly, and it has been an adventure. And so to the specifics of your evaluation, first, your topic, you were speaking about your life, but you didn't just ramble on about unrelated events. There was a clear structure and a very relatable topic as you spoke about your parents, your interaction with children. And we all, we all have some kind of, of that in our life. We all have some kind of interaction with those people that we learned from, those people who affected us, and the childhood, those formative years. And I think it's really important when someone like you goes up and gives that speech that we're able to connect with that and we're able to be in your shoes, even if it looked different for each of us. So I just really appreciated that. And that was, you did a really good job of, of choosing your topic. And then I noticed secondly, that you had a sheet of notes, which that can be good and it can be bad. And you did a very good job for the most part of, of you weren't reading off your notes. It was clear that you understood your speech and that's great. Now one, I would say, to there were a couple times where you paused you looked down at your notes you found your spot and then you continued and i think as you continue on that you can grow in the ability to not have to pause your speech because it can bring us out of the speech and the flow of the great story something else that was great that i really wanted to highlight was um your confidence this was your first speech you were clearly confident up there on stage 
And I love that. The, um, yeah, you didn't look like it was your first time. So I really appreciate that. And I think that we all noticed that. And then one more area in which you could grow, even though you were incredibly confident, you kind of just stood in a little box. And I felt like you didn't move much. Your voice seemed to stay at a pretty general tonality. Now, it's also a little difficult online to be able to notice those things. So it may have been a different experience for the people in person. But for us online, I think we could have used a bit more movement and a bit more fluctuation in your voice to you know, express the emotion of what was going on. But all in all, that was a wonderful icebreaker speech. I loved it. I think we all loved it. And we're so happy to have you speaking in our club now. Thank you. first evaluation. No. Yeah, wow. well done, Daniel. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you. I'm going to hand over to our next evaluator this evening, and that is Nicholas Jackson, and he will be evaluating Michaela's speech. Over to you, Nicholas, who is online. Do you know your dog? <laughs> do you know your dog? Uh, Michaela, when you said, do you know your dog, I got very excited because this is true. <laughs> And she is one of the best. Oh, small. So your introduction immediately captivated the people that have dogs because you can see what it does. Just by somebody seeing it on camera, everybody feels that same emotion. So what a wonderful way to introduce your speech by asking the question. What I would try and tell you to avoid is the informalities. The, oh, this is the first time I'm on stage. This feels awkward. I don't know what to do. Just leave that. Immediately say, do you know your dog? Or who has a dog? And those questions captivate the audience, just as June did now. You notice, your notes are always fun to have, but you, know, you notice as soon as you let them go, your posture went from standing with your hands behind your backs to the start of opening up, you started saying things like, where do dogs come from? Natural selection and you used your hands to explain more. And as your hands became freer, you became more confident in what you were saying. You have this beautiful way of adding humor to anything you say, and you do it almost in like a third persona so just as when you started getting more confident, you started moving to the side of the screen, you could almost use it as a, a puppet or a, a, a comment on your own speech. So don't lose that, but become aware of using that instead of like a crutch or a filler, but as a way to enhance your speech. Your hand gestures were great. Your, you have a wonderful way of pace and a, a way of telling a story with enthusiasm, with excitement. You almost get carried away in the, in, the in the way you say your speech, which almost takes us and makes us get carried away. So keep your, keep, keep your storytelling skills. Get rid of those nerves in the beginning. I would suggest practicing your speech. <clears throat> I know you prepared it, and there was a lot of information here about wolves and dogs and and that was interesting to know, but practice it so that you can organize the introduction, what you want to tell us, and then your conclusion. Because somehow I got confused between what is it, what tips or tricks, or what message were you trying to convey, or were you just giving an informational speech? Your path is persuasive influence, and think of ways how you can persuade your audience or leave the message and leave us something to think about or something to take away. But you did end by saying, who has a cat? And that was, again, brilliant humor. I don't know if it was impromptu or planned, but it was a great way of saying, oh, I remember you, and I, you can come back to my next talk. So well done. Well done. Thank you so much, Nicholas. Thank you. Much for your evaluation, and I'd like to hand over to our last evaluator for this evening, who is Michelle Page, and she will be evaluating Claire Fonsell's speech, who is online. Over to you, Michelle. 
Thank you. Hello, Claire. Claire, 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 everything you do comes from love. And the theme is so appropriate for what you did today. So beautiful. And resilience is something that definitely oozes out of you. I loved your speech and I love the fact that you really engaged so naturally and so comfortably with the audience. You are a total natural speaker and it has something to do with you doing this for 20 years or something. It has to. I love the fact that you were standing when you spoke. That was really, really powerful. I know you took that advice from your last speech you gave. So that was great because we really felt your, your energy when you actually spoke from the, from the, the camera and especially for the, the fact that you're online. So well done on that. I love the fact that you had resilience by candlelight tonight and you really worked that magic. You were very expressive. I love the way that you leaned into the camera. That was very powerful. Your hand gestures were definitely more uh, articulate this evening. You also had your hands on your hips at one stage. That was really great. And I also love the fact that you touched your chest at one stage when you said something about speaking from the heart. I love the fact uh, that you mentioned something around everything and I mean everything. It really punched through that topic when you spoke about it. And I think it's really important for us to know that there are a couple of things that really works, especially when you are online. It really does work to be able to engage more with an audience. I like the comment around unfortunately and unintentionally that it play on words was very powerful. A few things that I would recommend that you work on you use the crutch word so a lot. Uh, it just happens to come through. And <laughs> I know that that's something you're trying to work on. Your pauses and your pace of your speech is really great. You know, we really can understand what you're trying to deliver. I think you're very clear and articulate. You're confident and you're definitely secure in your topic when you deliver it. So that, that comes through in terms of your actual belief in what you're speaking about. I encourage you to do a few things. Use the room more. You've had quite a bit of space around you. So use that space. Pull in the audience more. You were requesting us to, you know, do some work on a podcast. So engage the audience more. Get the involvement more in terms of what you're doing. And I think there's also one or two moments where you use many of those. And you also said those are the things. I think be more specific. So, you know, zone in on specific things that you're talking about. All in all, the topic that you spoke about really comes from what you're really passionate about. And that was delivered beautifully. It's always such a pleasure to listen to you, Claire. Thank you so much. Onwards and upwards. Thank you for that brilliant evaluation, Michelle. I would like to hand over to TikTok, TikTok. <laughs> Julia, where are you, our timekeeper? If you can please give us the times for our evaluations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this <clears throat> is there's no time for for me to talk a lot i make it short even being in a country with no time daniel well done 315 nicholas 325 and michelle you really watched the clock well done 251 and i like to leave you with this evaluation with one swedish saying what means the limit of my language are the limits of my world. Over to you. Wow. Thank you so much, Julia. Fellow toasties and guests and our presidents, we now come to a very exciting part of the evening where we have our Table Topics Master, Janet Vasquez, who is going to be doing our impromptu speeches. Janet, I'm going to hand over to you. She is online, so please have your ears pressed, your listening skills on, and the best volunteers, please anticipate put your hands up. In the interim, we are passing pieces of paper around in the room to evaluate the best evaluator. And for those online, please can you tick the poll and vote for the best evaluation speech. <laughs> Can you hear me clearly? Yes. 
Can you hear me clearly? Yes. Yes, we can, Jennifer. Everything is very clear. Can you hear okay. us? Yeah. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster, for the introduction. Fellow Toastmasters and distinguished guests, good evening. One of the most exciting portions of the Toastmaster meetings is the table topic session. The main objective is to challenge members and guests to develop their impromptu communication skills and to effectively think on their feet by answering and rehearsed questions. We also want to give every member and guest the opportunity to speak at each meeting. We do this with a table topic session. Table topic is specifically designed to develop your four essential communication skills. Number one, listening. Number two, thinking. Number three, organizing. And number four, speaking. Today, at your, at, um, today as your topic master, I will ask you to pick the picture of the well-known personality on slide. And I will read the quote. Then I would like you to give us your thoughts and insights about the quote and the topic. And the topics are related to our theme, which is move, reflect, and grow. Your response must be at least one minute and can be more than two minutes. You will see the green signal from Julia for one minute and yellow signal at one minute and 30 seconds and red signal at two minutes. I also encourage you to use the word of the day, resilience. So let's get started. Who wants to start first? Thank you. Uh, please pick the personality in the slide. Imagine you just explain the, the concept yeah. again. Yeah, so it's just a man. And then she as well. So okay. Yeah, quote. John Maxwell. John Maxwell. So the question, the quote from John Maxwell is. Reflective thinking turns experience into insight, John, by John Maxwell. Okay. <laughs> would, you like, would you like more explanation with regards to what's required? So I've got an idea. Okay. I just need to talk on that topic. So Jada, do you mind please just explaining the role of table to topics once more for us? Okay. The table top, the reason why we have table topic is to develop our um, to impromptu speech by giving you the unrehearsed quote like this by John, like for the example that uh, the one that you pick from John Maxwell, give us your insights and thoughts about his um, about his quote. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So just speak around that. Okay. And your time starts now. <laughs> I thought I would kick things off with my first meeting mm -hmm. in, the, in the spirit of well resilience. Mm -hmm. in a <laughs> yeah. Reflective thinking is something that I've probably done a bit too much of in my life, mm -hmm. ironically. I think there's healthy reflective thinking and maybe unhealthy reflective thinking. Mm -hmm. Where's that line really? So that's something that I'm quite interested to unpack here in Toastmasters as I go forward in my journey to understand when should the mind be active and when can we turn it off? Mm -hmm. Ultimately, it does turn into insight when it's employed in the right way and when it's powerfully inactive in your life. And I think I'm very excited by the prospect of being part of this group. I think I lucked out with regards to choosing a group. <laughs> I really just went at Benita's suggestion. She gave me a few suggestions, and I'm getting off the topic here, but she gave me a few suggestions, and this was the one that jumped out of me. And I'm very glad it is. So thank you and excited. <laughs>
Any, uh, any volunteers in the room? Yes. Oh. I have to do that quickly so that I can <laughs> back up. <laughs> okay, uh, choose your personality. I mean, the, the person who in this slide. I will go for oh, Confucius. Oh, Confucius. <laughs> yeah, I thought I'd, uh, if I'm going to challenge myself, I might as well, in the spirit of resilience, step as far out of the comfort zone as possible. Okay, the code. Okay, the quote from Confucius is learning without reflection is a waste. Reflection without learning is dangerous by Confucius. You please give us your insights and um, thoughts about his quote. Hey, so learning without reflection is a waste. Reflection without learning is dangerous. Nice quote. <laughs> learning without reflection, of course. Learning can become, um, there's always the joy of learning something new, the excitement of pursuing new knowledge, reaching new frontiers with your intellect and creativity. However, that in itself can become a crutch. We can become dependent on the learning, addicted almost to that excitement, but never reflecting on what we've learned, how it applies to our lives, and how we can actually put it into action going forward. So that is where I would say reflect, learning without reflection is a waste because it doesn't lead to anything substantial intellectually and uh, when it plays out in your life. Reflection without learning is dangerous. Ha. I think, uh, James, you hit the nail on the head where we can reflect too much. Where's that line between, well, healthy reflection and unhealthy reflection? I think it becomes dangerous without the learning because we end up in that trap of over-analysis. Mm -hmm. We get stuck in constantly reflecting, 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 but without seeing how it applies to our life, the true depth of it and then actually putting it into action, which is where the real growth and the real transformation comes from. Thank you so much for your insightful idea. Okay. Anyone else? Everyone on our online who would like to volunteer, we have Daniel who's put up his hand. Sure. Daniel, you're next. <laughs> the males rule you tonight. Yeah. Um, I guess as the American, I will go with JFK, John F. Kennedy. John F. Kennedy, Kennedy, or testament. Okay. Um, his quote is, conformity is the jailer of freedom and the enemy of growth by John F. Kennedy. Daniel. Oh, that is a good quote. Conformity is the jailer of freedom and the enemy of growth. Hmm. Conformity, by definition, is of course when you just act like everyone else. And you know, I have to say that in this moment, in this club, surrounded by you people, I disagree with this quote, because it says to conform will jail your freedom and be the enemy of your growth. A wonderful analogy or metaphor there, but I think it depends on who you're conforming to, what you're conforming to be more like. And in this room full of people who are full of love, and people who want to see you grow, people who want to help you, I think that if you conform to that, you conform to the love and the energy and the life that is around you, that you will grow and you will experience freedom. I'm also a very strong Christian. And for me, conforming to be more like Jesus, to be more like 
um, my Lord and my Savior, who I'm trying to follow and trying to be like, that is another good thing, conforming to serve, conforming to love. Now, of course, I'm being a little facetious here, and um, because oftentimes conformity can be bad. If you're just going along with what is popular because it is popular, you can be led into a trap. You can be led into a difficult situation and you, you won't grow if you conform to the ways you've always done things, if you conform to bad things. But um, as the great author uh, James Clear, who wrote Atomic Habits, he spoke about creating an environment that facilitates positive habits. And so the reason that I chose to actually go against this quote is because when you're choosing the right environment, you're choosing the right people to fill your life with, conformity it will actually be a positive thing as you draw closer to those great people. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel, for sharing your ideas and thoughts about this quote. Anyone? Anyone else online? Oh, John. John, do you see John? Yes. Yeah. John, you're up. As the other American, I will take Benjamin Franklin, please. Benjamin Franklin. His quote is, love your enemies for they tell your faults by Benjamin Franklin. John, go. That's an interesting quote from Benjamin Franklin, love your enemies for they tell you your faults. And that's interesting to me for one reason. And that is that I don't believe that Benjamin Franklin in an important way lived that quote. I just finished a biography of him. And what struck me is that he was a great great man and he accomplished many things. One of those is that he is considered the founder of the world self-help movement. But at the time of his death, he did not love his only son. His only son had taken the opposite side in the Revolutionary War. His only son had been a British Tory and had been the governor of a British province at the time, and Benjamin Franklin could not forgive him. And they died split apart. And for all his accomplishments, that is a sad, sad thing that he, at the time of his death, years after our revolution, he could not love his only son. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, John, for sharing your, for sharing the, the book of Benjamin Franklin and it's moving. Uh, who was not moved by the story about Benjamin Franklin? Okay, let's pick another. Too deep for me. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants? Um, who wants Shireen. another? Shireen, who go. wants another? Shireen, I'll go. What is with our newbies, Jamie and Lisel? We haven't seen you, Lisel, yet. Beautiful, beautiful woman, Lisel. Uh, Jennifer, I'll go. Um, can you hear me, Jen? Yeah, I could hear you. Um, okay. mm. So Brian Tracy, I'll go with Brian Tracy. Okay, Jamie. Ooh. Brian, Ter Brian Tracy. The code is love your enemy. Oh, sorry, sorry, that's not. Brian Tracy, code is your life is a reflection of your thoughts. If you change your thinking, you change your life by Brian Tracy. Go, Jamie. It's Shireen, Jenna. Oh, Shireen. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> your life is a reflection of your thoughts. 
if you change your thinking, you change your life. So when you walked in here this evening, either being the first time that you were going to be speaking or the first time that you were going to be seeing people in person or the first time that you were going to be meeting everybody in the room, what were you thinking? Were you nervous? Were you anxious? Were you scared? Were you happy? Were you excited? Because whatever you were feeling would have been reflected by how you showed up this evening. And from what I saw this evening, when you walked into the room, you were so friendly and so beautiful and so vibrant. When you walked in this evening, you were so amazing and so huggable. <laughs> and when you stood up here and spoke after hearing you saying how nervous you were, you reflected something very different. So case in point, what you are thinking is going to show up in terms of how you can change your life. You can either be confident or you can either go into a corner where you see everybody there and hide away from everybody. Or if you have positive thoughts and if you have an open mindset in terms of what you're about to encounter, take a breath. Hold it and release. And in that moment, what you are thinking, if you don't change it, you're not going to be able to change your life. Whoa. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your wise idea and thoughts, Shireen. Anybody else? Last takers in the room or anybody online? Libby, Libby. Come on, Libby. Come on. No, not today. Anybody else? Okay. Well, that takes us to the end this evening of our table topics. Well done, Janet. That was absolutely incredible. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Tick tock, tick tock. Julia, where are you? We spoke yeah, it was, just, it was yes. James was the first in the room. Mm -hmm. Then it was Matt, the second one. The third one was Daniel. 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 John. The fourth one was John. 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 And Julia. So while Julia is doing the timekeeper's report, we are passing pieces of paper around for that for um, voting for best uh, impromptu speech. And um, in the room, please, can you vote on the poll? Lovely to see all the faces. Hello, hello, Imran, I see your video for the first time. Lizelle, Jamie, I see everybody on the screen for the first time this evening. Julia, tell us about the time. Yes, the time is actually floating better with red wine and I'm very lucky drinking South African wine in Sweden because my sister and her husband are sommeliers and selling South African wine to Sweden. And it makes it very easy because James had one minute, Matt had one minute, 36, Daniel had two minutes, John had one minute, 23, Shireen, well done, one minute, 35. And I leave you with a quote for the evening. Having another sip? Mm. Better als kat och verlat en et als riga als kat. Better to have loved and lost than to have never loved at all. I send you much love from Sweden. You will see me next time back in South Africa. Have a good time. That's my timekeeper's report for tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you. While we are getting the counts in, we are going to hand over now to Louise, who is going to give us the grammarian's report this evening. Okay, good evening. Okay, so just for those of you who don't think that well, I can't hear very well. So um, I might have missed some stuff, mm -hmm. but I've written down a lot and I don't want to leave anybody out. But um, there's some amazing, some amazing phrases that came up. There's some kick-ass words and a lot of people use the, the buzzword that we we're supposed to use and we're in line with our theme right so resilience resilience all, all themes of resilience 
Okay, so my eyesight's also not so good, but Chantel, I love, love some of the words you put in it. Okay, so I like to ponder. I mean, that's such a lovely word. The highs and the lows, humbling. Life is an adventure. That's a fabulous. I'm not sure if this is what I'm supposed to do, but did I ask Michelle? Am I allowed to just waffle on? Okay. Um, <laughs> kids don't do what they say you should do, they do what you do. Oh, well, that's very, very yeah. powerful, right? Okay. I didn't use my word. Um, <laughs> next time. Okay. <laughs> Madam Toastmaster, please. Well done. Use my words a lot. Thank you. I'm I'm super impressed. Um, lots of things you did really well, but dig deep was one that I I really really liked. Okay, um, Michaela. Okay, I can't really see. Uh, see what makes them tick. I mean, I think that's also quite cool. All right, ninety million dogs in the world. Well, I didn't know that. That's a lot, right? Okay. Um, everything I thought I knew was a lie. Okay, that's that's really interesting. Okay, Libby, thank you for teaching us to breathe. That was that was huge. Um, use resilience. Thank you very much. And underestimate the power of our breath. Totally, we do. I think that's a statement, right? Um, Michelle, <coughs> resilience, resilience, everything. Lots of times. Thank you so much. Um, onwards and upwards. Always very powerful. The very English. Onwards and upwards. So uh, that was cool. And yes, the word powerful. Um, Claire, I did like, because I'm I'm ESCOM, I'm so ESCOM out. And <laughs> for you Americans or people overseas, you don't understand this this joke about load shedding and then candlelight. It is serious. This is exactly what it is. Load shedding, we don't have electricity. So speech by candlelight, not everybody gets that. But we're fortunate we don't um, have load shedding. Here we are. As Gabrielle, very fortunately, we're allowed to use this wonderful office. We don't have load shedding here, so conveniently tonight, we have light. Otherwise, we might be in darkness. Um, creators of our own lives, fantastic. Good in the bad and the downright ugly. Love that one. Might use that. Um, become the best version of ourselves. I love that. Okay, so how much time do I have to answer? Um... <laughs> <laughs> Adeline, thank you. Daring Division D. Love that. Gotta have this buzz. I love the word buzz. We need a buzz, right? Mm -hmm. So that's um and resilience. Well done, thank you. Mm -hmm. Have another glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I might leave some people out because this is such a mess. I didn't realize how many things I'd write down. Um James. Uh, like to kick things off in the spirit of resilience. Well, then you can also have someone. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, Matt, also fantastic. You did an icebreaker all, all in all in yourself there. I like that one. Um, I can't read what it is. Comfort, getting out of your comfort zone. So all of those things are great. Um, the quotes, honestly, I've written so many pieces of things on this piece of paper. I can't really do much more. I knew, um, you know, just John on the, the one table topics. Um, I like the fact that you made the statement he didn't live by the quote, that quote. Yeah. So that, that's quite impressive. I, I mean, I, unfortunately, I didn't know many of those. Um, I don't know that much about American history. So maybe I need to do a little bit more on that. Um, yeah, and he didn't, you know, he could not love his only son. Quite, that's quite dramatic. But on the whole, I think it was amazing. And thank you all. Um, yeah, we, Justine and I tried to find a word that was quite dramatic. I mean, I had a couple of other ones. But thank you. And um, well done. So you have been out of your comfort zone with your first role this evening with the grammarian. I would like to hand over to Justine, who is going to give us the um, er, count. Oh. Raise yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. So the time everyone has been waiting for. Yeah. I just want to first acknowledge our beautiful speakers tonight. Well done. It was beautiful. You all showed resilience. I didn't even get to use the word because I'm only speaking now, but there it is. <laughs> so I'm hoping not to leave anyone out, but I'll just go through my list and then we should be good to go. Shireen, 
You, your correct word was um, but it was only used three times. So, oh, good job. Mm. Gabrielle, um, is also your correct word. Mm. Also not used too many times. Louise, there were quite a few ums. That was your correct word. Julia, you just had one so. Congratulations. Wow. Wow. Daniel, you go between um and so. It was a draw there. <laughs> and then Chantal, you, your crutch word was um. Nick, your crutch word was ah. Oh. It was only three times, so that's not too bad. Michaela was so. Libby, all I heard was one um in your whole time speaking, so great work. Michelle, also only one um. Claire, I know I've done this before with you. <laughs> so it's your crush word. <laughs> uh, Madeline, I didn't count you because you, okay, you were the guest. You know, so <laughs> Grace. <laughs> yeah. Well, Jenna, your crush word was R. James was so. Just you though, so not bad. And Matthew had a draw, but only one each of um and so. And John, you had nothing. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely incredible. Thank you. And everybody, just remember that this tests your listening skills, be taking on these roles. So to put yourself out of your comfort zone and please take on these roles, we really do encourage you to do that because it also does assist you with your speaking. So, fellow toasties. <laughs> yes. So, Fellow toasties and to our presidents and all of our guests online and our new members that have joined us this evening. Our theme for this evening was move, reflect and grow. And I want you to reflect as we are ending off this evening and before I hand over to our president. In order to create resilience, in order to create growth and in order for us to be daring, I want you to reflect on how you are going to move, grow, and learn, and reflect on these following areas. Your heart, your mind, your health, and your soul. Because it's in focusing on these four areas that you are then able to feel a little bit of movement under your tush in order to move forward and in order to take your life to the next level. It has been an honor to be your Toastmaster for this evening, and I wish you all well. Before we say goodbye and do a little bit of chatting for those of us in the room, I'd like to hand over to our incredible president, Gabrielle. Oh, you still got actually three minutes, <laughs> Shireen. <laughs> You've got more time. <laughs> <laughs> to speak for I, can't yeah. hear, I can't hear enough from you, Shireen. This is so inspiring. But Gabrielle, you're, you're more than welcome because you are just beautiful. <laughs> I just said we have to charge entrance yes, fee. Absolutely. Because what's happened this evening, you couldn't have paid for. Oh. I'm blown away and I don't want to add anything to it of wisdom I've looked up, anything I feel. I can tell you I feel gratitude, incredible gratitude that we are a group of people, again to say, so honest, so fun loving, so resilient, so beautiful, so loving. It's really, I'm absolutely touched. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the role players who have done an exquisite job. And my good Daniel, the first time Zoom master, I really salute you. You have done great. So a big round of applause. To you. As well, Louise, it's your first time you had to stand up here. And what I loved was there was so much humor in it. You didn't only listen so well, but the way you conveyed it to us was lighthearted and exquisite. Thank you. 
again, so happy that you are with us. The speeches, learning. We all have to learn in our lives. And we come from backgrounds which haven't been the easiest ones. Chantel, my heart. I hope we have another evening where we somehow can twist the Toastmaster program to such an extent that Chantel can share more of that exquisite profession and life skill she has learned through experience. Um, it's, we, we have to work on that. So very touching. And Michaela. Mm -hmm. um, you go on a journey now. May your wonderful, radiant presence, mm -hmm. your lightheartedness and your deep heart bring you to beautiful places. Lovely people as you are, may hug you and welcome you in their lives and share new experiences. We look forward to the day when you come back and you share with what dog what human being, <laughs> what bee, what beach, what whale you have been <laughs> together and tell us more. We love you and we wish you all the best for your journey, which only starts in August. But let me say that now. <laughs> we have been, now I talk, now I talk too much. Good. We have guests this evening and I have not really been with you on, um, on screen there. So, uh, mm, so. Uh, <laughs> let me come a little bit closer. Liesel, did you enjoy the evening? And how did you come to us? You can unmute yourself. Hi, good evening. Um, yes, this was very insightful, very exciting. Um, how I got onto this platform. So I am Chairperson of Women in Tourism and those lovely ladies, Shireen and Michelle, they're part of our EXCO and they shared it in our WhatsApp group. And I thought, okay, let me come online and see what this is all about. And it was fantastic, really uh, something to learn, you know. I was listening to the ums and the ahs and the so's and I'm like, oh gosh, I'll do the same thing. So, so I'll probably be very conscious of that the next time I need to speak, you know, in front of an audience. But all in all, it was fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lisa, and I, and I hope so much that we see you again. And maybe one day you would like to be part of this amazing group. And then Liselle, where are you? Jamie. Just, uh, Jamie. There's Jamie. Yeah. <laughs> Jamie, hello. How did you come to us? Hi. Um, basically the same way as Lizal. Um, we I'm the Secretary of Women in Tourism. And um, so we work with Shireen and uh, Michelle. And yeah, so they posted it on our group. And I must say, I thoroughly enjoyed this. This was a great experience. Um, because for me, as one of the people, I'm, I'm a tourist guide. So even though I'm used to speaking um, in front of a lot of people, just speaking directly face to face like this is quite nerve wracking. It's very, it's, it's something different. So I I would love to actually join this, this club because for me, it's great to actually learn and just improve my self-awareness and speech. Wonderful. We are here with open arms <laughs> to welcome you. Wonderful. And um, as uh, Daniel and I are the VPMs of membership, uh, you will write to us and then we take it further. I would like as well to speak to Navabisa. She is the friend of, um, let me just, uh, Aviva. Yeah. And uh, can I, Navabisa, can you put the camera on? Hello. Yes, it's on. <laughs> it's on. Hello, everyone. Um, yes, I am a friend of Aviwe, and I came with Michelle. Um, Michelle was recommended. So Marissa, who's friends with Michelle, recommended uh, this club. So I thought just to check in today, just to check the vibe and how you guys are. And I'm already loving it. So... Um, I think I'm part of the team already. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. 
we built another level of chairs up here. <laughs> so we can see you. <laughs> Love it. Thank, Thank you, you so guys. much. We are delighted. Thank you. I want Kelvin, are you somewhere? I think Kelvin left. Kelvin left. And Lisa? Uh, I think Kelvin has another has another appointment. That's why he left already. Giselle. Giselle, you spoke to Giselle. The first one. Ah, the first, sorry, sorry, sir. That oh, sometimes happens. Yeah, nibbles. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> and then we have Aviva. Exactly. Aviva, I would like to come to the front because you're in the room. Oh, Beautiful Aviva. And, <laughs> and she has something very interesting to share about herself. Do so, I? Yes. <laughs> yeah, like all these wonderful things you do. Please tell us. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to just stand in front of such amazing people this evening. I am in awe personally. So I also just want to thank Onwabisa for actually recommending that I should be here tonight. She unfortunately couldn't be here. So I'm going to give her like feedback of the <laughs> personal feel of it. So I am doing life coaching. I just graduated now from my bachelor's degree. I was studying Bachelor of Applied Social Sciences. So I was very interested when you were talking. Now. <laughs> so um, I also do uh, YouTube. I'm a content creator. I'm more of a social butterfly basically wow. so i'm here to learn more how to articulate myself better more confidence breathing skills where do i use the so often you know so and then you know like i mean so i want to stop those things because i'm i want to grow my platform people are very interested in what i have to share the wisdom i have so i want to just bring it across with more confidence if I can oh like that. icebreaker so Awesome. Thank, you. thank you, thank you. And then to the very end, when I look at our maiden up there in Sweden, do you know Julia always brings some lightness, some fun, some extravaganza in, and she speaks always openly about what she thinks, and she is such a value in our club. And uh, newly um, engaged, Julia, lots of happiness for your life. It is the right man. It is the right moment. You were desiring it so much. <laughs> we all desired it in our lives to find the right partner. <laughs> and <laughs> super excited about it. It's still kind of not official, but thank you so much. It's it's okay to say it. I'm actually getting married. <laughs> Okay, Liselle and Jamie, it's not official yet. Okay, don't <laughs> tell our friends yet. <laughs> Woo! That brings us. Oh, here's another dog. How beautiful. Now, everybody brings their animals forward. I just have a flea somewhere, so I can't <laughs> compete with the dogs. I got it from a dog. Now, I would like to come to the, another highlight of the evening, which deserves a drum roll, and it is. The, the award for the best speaker. Um, and it is three, two, one. The best speaker of the evening is Matt E. Oh, Sorry, best table topic. <laughs> When James sent his photograph on WhatsApp, I took, I made a coffee and sent it to Verity and said, Verity, would you like this guy in our club? And said, oh my God, who's that? <laughs> Just because honesty is rain is, is raining in this house. <laughs> then let's come. Then is the best evaluator now. Uh, well, we start from the back. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Here, Daniel. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Next drummer for whoever is the best. Best, 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 best,
and my, my big support. <laughs> we should have stood in front of this picture here and then take okay. it. Okay. Um, Daniel and May, I ask you again now for the last one, the best speaker of the evening, big drum hole. Please. on the 19th is it right yes. on the 19th of Juli uh, july the value of gentleness it's a beautiful theme we are sitting as a team in the exco and we are finding new themes for the year this one comes from john we will not mention each time but john you are a gentleman and you are gentle <laughs> and you're kind and it is beautiful to start this year, because the other theme was from the other team, to start now with you far away, but so close to us with this beautiful theme of the value of gentleness. I wish you all a beautiful week to Aya. Thank you. If I wouldn't have my super team, good. I would like to come back to something we discussed before and which um, Madeline uh, spoke well, as well about, to find your goal during the year. What would you like to achieve at Toastmasters? Last year, we discussed that, and Vanya, who unfortunately has left us, made a beautiful tree where for every person, there is room here, to write in, in this case, I brought a, only a pencil so we can change this again then. Um, you write in what your goal is. It can be courage, it can be getting confidence, it can be being of service, it can be whatever you, you want. You write it in and please remember it so that we, so that we come back to that one day and we ask you, Justine, what was your word? And you see it there and you will say, have you reached your goal? Have we supported you enough to reach your goal? And have you blossomed into that person you wanted to be? Shall if, I, yeah. I do shall I write the name and the thing? And then maybe the from the online can send it to us and then we yeah, can write it. Very good. Then. I want to repeat what Michelle said. We are writing our name and the goal we have into one of the boxes. And the online uh, members, please can be so kind and send that idea on to the general toasted. Um, maybe okay. to, to toasted? Yeah, to toasted. Set it for What's tonight on the WhatsApp toasted with your name, which we see then, and write your goal. So we can fill this beautiful tree and look back one day and say, I was there. I, I, I wanted to be there, and that is what I am now. I wish you all. Just one thing. Please, please come. Cheers. Thank, thank you. Thank what you. She, she needs to say bid farewell because she's so lovely. Yeah. <laughs> we would like those who are interested to please sign up for their roles this okay. evening. Send them a message to Janet. She's brilliant at the agenda. Uh, she really gets the slots filled in. We want to be timeless about it so that everybody prepares in advance. We don't want you preparing a speech two days before. The opportunity is going to be online on the 19th. We have a grammarian, an I'm an earth counter, a toastmaster, a timekeeper. There's plenty of roles. It grows your confidence, like Shireen said. Sign up. You've got to be in it to win it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It brings me as well, Michelle, to say a great, great thank you to Janet 
who has invented one link after the other. We are so safe now with writing our roles in and um, prepare ourselves into the future, not come last minute. That is absolutely superb. Janet, my darling, thank you so much. She gets up at three o'clock in the morning to have it all prepared. So I please, am humble. Great round of applause to you and great to you. And the last reminder now is for Claire on the toasted um, WhatsApp. You will find the link to send her whatever question she's asking there to answer them and help her in her podcast she's going to start now. Said enough. Gentle, gentle, be with yourself. Look after yourself, love yourself, and come back to another wonderful evening next time online. It was a beautiful night with you, and I look forward to see you all on the 19th of July. Stay healthy and safe. Yeah. <laughs> awesome.